Good afternoon. How are everybody doing? I decided today I would try and broadcast from my deck. It's beautiful outside. It's kind of bright, but I'm loving the sunshine. So figured it'd be a good day to try to do that. So what are you guys drinking? This is another one of my favorite teacups. It actually has a hand painted dragon. I think it's called uh, Dragon Wear. Uh, it's uh, somebody in Japan hand painted it. I found it, I think, uh, at a resale shop when I was looking for teacups. I'm like, oh my gosh, because uh, dragons are definitely my my spirit animal. Dragons and dinosaurs. So it's like the mystical part, and you know, I'm obsessed. If anybody knows me, that I'm obsessed with dinosaurs. So hi, Chris. Good afternoon. Drinking Diet Coke. Uh oh, wasn't that your Lenten sacrifice? <laughs> uh, pop. You know, it happens. <laughs> I think uh, I was trying to, you know, cut back on certain things for Lent as well. And haven't really hit the mark most of the time. <laughs> it's a little windy, so let me know if I need to speak louder. I actually am wearing a little uh, afghan on my legs because it is slightly chilly in the wind. But like I said, I am not complaining about the sunshine and the basically the breeze of just fresh air. <laughs> it feels good. Um, I am drinking right now, I kept a little tea bag, uh, chamomile and lavender herbal tea from Bigelow again. I usually drink this one when I am going to go to sleep, uh, but right now it just sounded good to me just to chill out. Hi, Nice. How are you? It is beautiful here. Um, so just needed to chill out today. No more caffeine for me. Eat it. <laughs> what are you grateful for today? See a couple of fun people on right now. What are you drinking? And what are you thankful for? What I'm thankful for today is just the continued health of my family. Um, it's been a rough couple of days. Uh, some of you know my wife is a PR nurse, uh, so she is in constant just panic and fear of contracting this disease, this illness, um, from her patients, the ones she's trying to protect and to treat, um, having that threat all the time has really been wearing on us, so I've been trying to keep to my practices of positivity. Um, but I think yesterday was a breaking point. Um, and I don't know if you guys have felt that way. Um, sorry. <laughs> I don't mean to get emotional. But um, it's just the fear of that unknown of losing your partner of, or even just, you know, I mean, it just like it overwhelmed me yesterday, and um, I'm assuming some of you have felt that way, so you're not alone. Uh, but I'm constantly trying to get back on track of like, okay, there's no reason to stay fearful. It's not helping. It's making it worse. <laughs> so just just being like, you know what? I had my cry. I had my freak out. Now I need to move on, and stay positive. Grateful for technology that allows me to see my family. That's another one that I've been constantly happy about with Zoom and with Facebook, and FaceTime, and everything possible that we can stay connected. Even like uh, one of the guys that I work for, we're going to have a Zoom meeting later because we usually have like a weekly meeting. And I was like, I don't want to bring whatever Jackie might be bringing in to you so we're just gonna i'm gonna help you figure out zoom <laughs> so we don't have to do that dandelion and cannonball tea yes i haven't had that i love i've, I've always loved the 
thought of dandelions and tea and eating it. Um, it's actually me and Jackie's flower. <laughs> um, when we were growing up, we played softball together, which is super shocker. Uh, and I used to throw dandelions at her as like a flirting kind of thing. So we always thought it would have been like, you know, if we had a bouquet at our wedding, it should be full of dandelions because that's, that's the first flower we gave each other, which is super cheesy, but it's true. <laughs> Anybody else have cute little stories like that? make no sense to anyone other than it's that those stories that are just like what you know unless you explain it to somebody it doesn't doesn't comprehend thankful for being able to stay home yeah. a lot of people don't have that option right now so I figured today would since I had my freak out yesterday and I had my crying bout um I was trying to figure out what I wanted to discuss and to, you know, talk to you guys about. And the only things that I can control right now are the way I see the world, the way I deal with it. And also, you know, there's certain things that we can do holistically to sort of boost our immune system. Um, not necessarily taking all these supplements and doing everything. And, and again, I am not... I am not a doctor. I am not a nurse. I am nothing like that. So all of these things that I'm going to kind of bring in is just from my research um, and also my, my yoga training with Ayurveda, which is actually the sister science of yoga. So it's the holistic kind of um, science instead of, you know, just the asana and the meditation. It's how to take care of your own body with, with just plants and the way that you eat and stuff like that. So hi, Laura. Love you, miss you. What are you drinking? You got to be drinking some cool tea. You always are. The reason I got the tea is because of Laura, because she's all like, oh, try these things. And I got hooked. So, all right. So boosting your immune system. So I made a little list to kind of go over. So the first one that I've been researching and looking on different articles, the major one is just getting enough sleep. I have been having such an issue and I've been seeing it in, in my friends posts as well of just staying asleep or getting to sleep. Um, I think the way that I'm handling my stress is like having my mind go a mile a minute thinking about stuff I can be doing, that I can be, you know, new content, things to talk about, things to share with people. Um, so I am constantly in this just, again, the hamster wheel in my brain and it won't shut off at night. And sometimes, you know, I usually, I usually try to go to sleep around 10 o'clock at the latest. Cause I wake up seven or eight o'clock with, with Deb when she wakes up. And so usually I try to lay down 9 30, 10 o'clock. And now it's like, I just, I can't stop my brain. It's like midnight, one o'clock rolls around and I'm like, I need to go to sleep. The baby's going to wake me up soon. You know? So there's really no getting away of like sleeping in or something like that. So I know a lot of you with children can relate and also with jobs that have to wake up still and go actually drinking Yerba. What is that? Yerba mate. I don't know what that is. Explain. Um, but yeah, just, just finding a way of calming your mind when you need to go to sleep. Um, I've been trying to use tea, uh, just to kind of chill out because my tea time is my meditation time. It's my me time because I feel fancy when I drink my tea and it's totally different mindset for me than any other beverage. I mean, like if I have a glass of wine, it's to, you know, kind of turn off. Uh, tea is necessarily just tuning in to me and inside. Coffee is to wake up. Coffee is caffeine for me. Even like if my tea has caffeine, I don't think of it as like, I'm going to chug this because I need caffeine. That's just kind of not my mindset for it. So 
I don't know if anyone else feels that way, but tea is my, my me time. So I've been trying instead of maybe drinking that other glass of wine, which I've been prone to do, um, is finishing my night drinking tea. You're I'm going to say that again. Yerba Matai. It's a South American kind of tea. Sorry if I butchered that. I obviously did because she had to phonetically spell it out for me. <laughs> uh, tastes kind of like grass. Ooh, probably like the dandelion tea. <laughs> my, my chamomile tea kind of tastes like that too. Um, anything that has grassy stuff in it. Okay, so getting enough sleep, seven to eight hours. So that's a big one to help with your immune system so that your body has time to rest, to reset, and everything like that. So then moderate exercise is another one to boost your immune system. Not prolonged intense though, because intense ones can, can actually suppress your immune system. But if you have, you know, that moderate of like getting your heart rate up a little bit and moving around, action, it gets, you know, your juices going and it um, helps your entire body. Of course, it's pretty close. So, um, managing your stress level uh, is, is key to your immune health as well. That's why it's kind of an oxymoron. It's just like you're trying to help your body fight foreign, you know, invaders into your system. But if you're thinking about that, you're, you're stressed out about it and you're, you're, you're being fearful and you're holding in like, oh God, am I going to get sick? I'm going to get sick. Everybody I know is going to get sick. And then you're in stress. You're in that fight or flight mode of like, oh God, oh God. And so having something as a practice for you is the only way to get out of that that mindset. So it's having meditation, doing yoga, journaling about your fears and letting them go like I do every morning. I just journal my to-do list. I journal what I'm worried about and then I let it go um, so that it's at least out there and I can be like, bye. Um, talking to someone, being a therapist, I, I, you know, I mean, there's so many different options right now online that weren't there before because it's necessary now that they can't see you face to face. But like a therapist, a counselor, they're out there. They're still trying to work with people to help them. So reaching out to somebody, like if you're, if you don't feel comfortable and talking about your fears to your family because you don't want to make it worse for them. I completely understand that. Like I, I want to be the strong one and I want to be the positive uppity woo person, you know, cause that's what I'm trying to be. But sometimes it's just, you have to talk to somebody and sometimes talking to a stranger is so much easier than feeling like you're putting your baggage and your stuff on the people you love and care about. So you make sure that you're, you're reaching out to somebody, even somebody just not in your life all the time can, can be helpful just to be like, Hey, I'm really struggling today. How do you feel? You know, like having it as like a two way street, if it's not a counselor, just be like, Hey, I've been really dealing with this. I don't know what to do. Are you okay? You know, that kind of thing. So just, just being, comfortable with, with reaching out if you need someone and then just eventually just having mindfulness will help with your stress level because then as you're staying in the present moment you're not thinking about what could be what could be bad what could be coming what's gonna happen to me because I went to the grocery store and I touched something you know it's just being mindful of like it I'm okay right now and if I'm not, if I, if I do have this virus, my stressing out about it is not going to make it better. It's going to make it worse because that stress state definitely makes your immune system 
freak out a little bit. So constantly telling yourself, I need to be the one to control how I deal with this because I was dealt this hand and I have to handle it. So how am I going to do that? All right. So then the next thing is eating foods high in a couple different things. So they say vitamin C, vitamin D, getting enough sunlight, zinc, elderberry, and garlic. Garlic, I'm super excited about. I could eat garlic. Like if I could just cook garlic and eat cloves of it, I would. I love it. Um, in Ayurveda, it's considered the plant of the gods. Um, they have this whole thing where like there was one of their gods. They came and it dropped from the sky like from heaven, you know, and it's amazing. And it's such a healing plant and a healing food. So it's, it's definitely something in Ayurveda that they talk about all the time. Add garlic, add garlic, you know, to, to a bunch of different things. And then with the other Ayurveda kind of tips that I've been able to kind of bring together, just eating your meals at a regular time, choosing food that's easy to digest so that your body, you know, gets a break so that it can fight off infections and viruses and things that aren't supposed to be in your body. Hi, Judy. Um, so just, just making sure, you know, stuff that's easy to digest would be stews, soups, things that are warm. Um, and they actually say to stay away from cold foods, oily, heavy foods, so like cheeses, yogurt, <laughs> sadly, ice cream. So, but those are things that aren't easily digested and anything that's warm is easier to kind of go through your system so then your body isn't going against itself so that your immune system could go okay i don't have to deal with this crazy stuff this lady just ate <laughs> and i you know i can go do my job and do what i'm supposed to do and then the last thing they say is keeping a daily routine so i've heard talked about you know when you go on a trip you always feel like a couple days later you have to rest a lot um you feel out of whack you feel off balance and that's because you know you, you're you're actually off of your daily routine you know you're in a, a different place you're eating weird food you're eating it at weird times you're not sleeping the same way um not sleeping at the same moments so just thinking about, okay, well, I don't want to go too crazy, you know, being strict about it, but, you know, eating at a certain time at like 12, 1230 every day and going to sleep at 10 o'clock every night actually makes it easier for your body to handle because it knows, okay, this is the amount of sleep I'm getting all the time. So I'm going to work this way. So always thinking about, you know, how you can help help your body to help you. Um, self care too, just making sure that, you know, you're taking care of yourself, eating those whole grains and all the good foods as opposed to fried and bad things. And I, I feel like a lot of times, especially for me, when I'm bored, I eat. And if I have like munchy foods in the house, I will eat them if I, I don't have anything else to do. So, making sure that when you do go to the grocery store that you're only grabbing things that you want to eat and consume and put into your body because your food is your medicine. And a lot of times we don't see it that way. It's just, okay, I'm hungry, so I'm going to consume. But the stuff that you put into your body, you are what you eat. So, so those are a couple things that at least you feel a little in control of in your life so that, you know, maybe your stress level will go down and then your, you know, your immune system will go up. So if anyone has any other thoughts on what you can do to help with your immune system, please comment. Um, before we go into the meditation, I did want to tell you guys uh, that I have started a new initiative for Anchorage Retreat Center. And it's called Be Kind Always. We actually got these really cute arm bracelet band thingies <laughs> um and it, it says be kind always on it anchorage retreat center with a little anchor 
and I, I like wearing it where the beat kind of always is by my wrist and I can visually see it because that that's the reason why I wanted to make them is so that it's, it's a physical reminder to yourself that if you are about to maybe not be nice to someone or get frustrated with somebody, you have that to look down and be like, almost like that WWJD, what would Jesus do kind of thing. Like, just be kind. Like, it's not hard. Like, just just hold in any, any negative frustrations with people, especially strangers. You don't know what they're dealing with. You don't know what they're, they're going through. Especially now when everybody is so wired up and just about to explode all the time. You want to give them a little grace. And if you can be the good part of somebody's day just by being kind to them, then you did your, your job that day. Because that's really all we can do most of the time is just just be kind and be decent to everybody that you meet. Because again, you're not there to judge them. It makes you feel worse when you're crabby at somebody. So um, we have these for free. We have a bunch of them, like 300 of them. Um, all we ask is just two bucks in, in shipping and we'd love to send them to you with a couple other goodies. Um, just so that, you know, we can spread the love, spread the message of being kind. And um, just realizing that we're all in this together and there's only so many things we can do for each other, but the biggest one is just be kind always. All right, so on to our meditation portion. So I wrote a meditation on boosting your immunity. So I'm going to ask you first to start by closing your eyes and deepening your breath. Feel gravity's force on your body, grounding you into the earth. In your mind's eye, visualize your veins and arteries under your skin. pathways of your body that your white blood cells and antibodies use to come to your aid. Your body is a magnificent machine, always working tirelessly to protect you and keep you strong. Give your mindful energy these microscopic superheroes. Boost their powers with your attention and love. Help them complete their mission by getting proper sleep, eating healthful foods, and silencing the chatter in your mind. Do your part.
Repeat these affirmations. My cells are strong and they can fight anything. My body works in perfect harmony to keep me energized and well. I am full of vigor and ready to fight off any virus with ease. I am healthy. I am happy. I am full of love. Now open your eyes. Smile. We're going to be okay. Your body is amazing. It's going to fight for you. Make sure you take care of it. Thank you so much for, for being here with me. Remember to join our Be Kind Always initiative, the group on our page. Love and light. Namaste. Have a good day.